And we are pleased to have with us today the brilliant economist and anarcho-libertarian philosopher, Dr. Walter Block, a nationally important person who teaches at Loyola University in New Orleans. You can also catch him at uh, WalterBlock.com. And I'm going to introduce him by reading something from his recent writing, Radical Libertarianism, Applying Libertarian Principles to Dealing with the Unjust Government. Late one night in Washington, D.C., a mugger wearing a ski mask jumped into the path of a well-dressed man and stuck a gun in his ribs. Give me your money, he demanded. Indignant, the affluent man replied, you can't do this. I'm a United States congressman. In that case, replied the robber, give me my money. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Block? Yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> I love that, Dr. Block. Thank oh, you. Uh, you're very kind. Thank you. <laughs> How you doing? Oh, hanging in there. That's good. So what's going on in America right now? Well, uh, lots of interesting things. Uh, we're having a little depression. We're having a little oil spill. Um, yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so you would classify this as a depression right now? I think so, yeah. And, and why? Why is well, that? According to the government, the unemployment rate is only, what is it, 9.8%. They keep... Uh, changing a little bit, but according to independent statistics, the real number is 22%, which is starting to sound like uh, 1930s levels depression. And what was the unemployment rate in the 1930s? Well, it varied, but it was uh, up in the 20s, uh, uh, and there are some unemployment rates even now that are in the 30s and 40s, like, say, teenage black males. Uh, their wow. unemployment rate is always double or triple uh, the unemployment rate of other people. So uh, we're not doing all that well. Um, and, of course, in the 30s, the United States had no national debt, correct? Uh, much lower. And we were an, an exporter. In other words, we, we were able to feed ourselves. We didn't import food. Well, I don't think there's any problem with that, although they did have the Smoot-Hawley tariff in the uh, 30s, which we don't have now. Uh, well, we have tariffs, and, and we have uh, protectionism, but not as bad as the Smoot-Hawley tariff. And I congratulate Obama for not doing that. Um, I'm sure his union types would uh, love nothing better than that. Although we do have the Jones Act, uh, speaking of the uh, BP oil spill. There you go. Which is uh, sort of like that. Uh, the idea is that the Jones Act uh, requires that only U.S. ships uh, do certain things off our coasts, uh, like help uh, with oil spills. Right, yeah. and, and, and so all these big giant ships that have offered to come suck the oil up at the source have been refused entry under the Jones Act, which uh, Obama has not lifted, correct? Ab absolutely correct, yeah. And, and of course, Bush, for all his, his faults, uh, lifted it, I think, two days after Katrina. Oh, I didn't know he did that. That's yeah, he did. Oh, yeah. bless him. On the other hand... On uh, the other hand, he... <laughs> <laughs> on the other hand, we don't want to let Bush off too easily. Oh, no. Because... Uh, FEMA played roughly the role of the Jones Act, namely FEMA wouldn't allow all sorts of like hospital ships and people to come and help us. FEMA turned them away. FEMA turned uh, truckloads of ice and orange juice away from Kentucky and Tennessee and uh, uh, turned away ships also. So there is a, a similarity between the Bobsy twins, uh, Bush and <laughs> <laughs> Obama. Uh, their skin might be a different color, but uh, deep down uh, I see a lot of similarities between them. Yes, and the libertarian offers a different, uh, a different avenue to approach government, correct? Yes, slightly different. <laughs> and and how, how would you describe that for people that aren't familiar with the libertarian philosophy? Well, you know, that government is best which governs least uh, would hmm. be one way to... Uh, uh, I just made that up myself. I was going to yeah. say, hmm, that sounds oddly familiar. <laughs> no, 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 I just created that. <laughs> How dare you? Uh, uh, well, you, you have an article uh, that libertarianism is neither left nor right. Can you explain that? Well, yes. Uh, people try to pigeonhole uh, libertarians into the left-right spectrum, and, and they'll typically the political scientists will give you a quiz, and they'll say, well, are you far left, moderate left, in the middle? Uh, far right or middle right or moderate right, and there's no place for libertarians to go because on certain issues, libertarians are more leftish or lefties are more libertarian. On other issues, uh, righties, conservatives, are more libertarian. And on uh, foreign policy, uh, <laughs> they're both uh, very different than libertarians, at least of the Ron Paul variety. For example, on economics, conservatives, right-wingers are not all that bad, like if you look at the Wall Street Journal, sometimes called the Wall Street Journal, <laughs> they're, they're pretty good on economics, or at least they're not awful. And if you look at uh, some of the lefty uh, blogs, they 
they're not that bad on, uh, say, legalizing prostitution or pornography or uh, uh, freedom of the bedroom, although the feminists are not noted for that. But uh, So I think libertarians are neither of the left nor of the right. We're sui generis or we're unique. Uh, we believe in freedom across the board. The government should stay out of the bedroom and the bathroom and uh, pharmacy, and, and the government should also stay out of the... Uh, the kitchen and the counting house. Uh, pretty much, the government should stay out of a lot of things. And uh, how how, did, how would you characterize, say, Thomas Jefferson in terms of his libertarianism? Well, he was pretty good. He was a little weak on slavery, uh, but uh, <laughs> yes, he was. Uh, but uh, you know, apart from that, and and pretty much everyone in the 18th century was a little weak on. And and I, I don't mean to deprecate the uh, evils of slavery by saying a little weak. I'm just being silly here. Uh, he was horrible on on slavery. Of course. But apart from that. Uh, uh, Thomas Jefferson was pretty libertarian. He uh, he was one of the people who would certainly agree with that government is best, which governs least. Well, sure. So, and and all of our founding fathers, with possible, I guess, the exception of Hamilton, but yes. uh, were very much in favor of people being free and free to make their own mistakes, free to succeed without the government reaching into their pockets and their bedrooms and everything else. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, and now we see the government even wanting to uh, have. This week we got electronic health records uh, come 2014, where your records will be available to the government, who by then I'm sure will have complete control of health care and decide whether or not you drink, smoke, eat, do whatever too much to qualify for the surgery that you need. And so all of your records being integrated and placed in the hands of Big Brother, which is certainly antithesis of the libertarian viewpoint. Absolutely. Libertarians stand for freedom and uh, individual responsibility and initiative and uh, we're against the nanny state, which, uh, for our own good, uh, does all sorts of uh, things. Uh, it usually doesn't turn out to be for our own good. For example, one of my favorite topics, uh, I don't know that this is relevant, but I'll just shoot it out there, is some 40,000 people die on the nation's highways every year. And my most recent book is uh, in favor of privatizing highways and roads and streets. And the excuse that the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration will give is, well, this is due to speeding or vehicle malfunction or drunken driving or things like that. Really, it's due to the fact that the government owns and manages the roads. And if we would privatize the highways and the streets, uh, my calculation is that we, we'd have many fewer deaths. So here they are with their nanny state, making sure that our toilet bowls have only so much water, that our ladders <laughs> are of a certain kind. and. Uh, you know, that, that our medicines come with certain screw-off tops, which old people can't do, so they leave open anyway. Uh, so they're busy, you know, helping us, and quotes around the word helping, uh, on the one hand. And on the other hand, uh, you know, 40,000 people a year are getting killed needlessly, and, uh, you know, nothing. Blank out, as Ayn Rand would say. <laughs> well... When we come back, I'd like to talk about uh, what the average person can do to protect themselves in this depression that we're living in and whether or not you as an economist have any uh, ideas of how they might in not I'm not looking for investment advice, but just some practical advice that people can can do like buy silver, uh, hide it in the bed. Uh, dig a hole in the backyard and <laughs> hide your wealth from the government. Uh, anything uh, you want to share with the audience and more. Coming back with Dr. Walter Block, the anarcho-libertarian philosopher-economist from Loyola University. Well, that's a mouthful. 